Hey guys, Kevin here with Your Best Groove and Groove Tutorials, and in the next several minutes, I'm going to show you how to use the new form builder in Groove. But before we get into that, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the tutorials and informative videos we're posting here at Groove Tutorials. Okay, let's take a look at the new form builder and look at how you can use some of the settings and some of the details of how you add things and change things in the new form builder in Groove. Let's take a look. So the first thing we want to do is go into Groove Mail and from Groove Mail we're going to click on Forms and from there we'll click on New Form. Alright, the first screen we see has interested in our newsletter, stay in the know, and the email, first name, and submit button. And this is very much like it looked like in the past or it would default to with these two fields and the blue submit button. So what I want to do first is I'm going to walk through the simplest version of setting up a form and then we'll come back and we'll walk through some of the details of the colors, the styles, and adding and removing fields. So for this first walkthrough we're going to take what was given to us automatically and just click next so we're going to accept the email the first name and the submit button just as it is and click next so from here we get into what we always had with groove mail forms we tell it what lists and we go through the process and we create the form literally that's the simple way to use groove mail forms and we can click next and we need to select a list click next we can do webhooks i'm coming back to that we can add files i'm going to come back to that as well so you can create a very simple form very quickly using the new groove mail form builder but i'm going to go back now to the build form, the initial page. The first thing I want you to see is that we have templates available to us. And if we go here to the left and we click the templates, we can go down through and choose any of these. So let's say we like this one, make an appointment. So we click use. And this says the fields will be overridden and a preset will be imported. So the style as well as the fields are gonna change when we click okay. So we click okay. So now we have the vertical teal contact form that is already pre-formatted for us and we could use that. So this is one thing we can do is in the build forms area, we can use the templates to choose what style we want. Now let's look at a couple of other things we can do here in the build form section of the form and it has to do with our fields. So as I hover over the fields, you can see to the left, we have these move handles that we can grab and move things. So this simply says we can take the first name and move it to the bottom. We can take the submit and move it to the top. The second thing we can do is add fields. So you'll notice that this has no header and no description on the form. So let's add a field, select the field type, and I'm just gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see there are three fields down here which are actually just text areas. So we're gonna put a heading on, save that. We're gonna add another field, scroll down and grab the subheading save that and then we're going to go add one more field and we're going to go to the bottom and click paragraph okay so this is how we add text to the form that we might want anywhere on the form i'm going to now use the drag handle and move this new information these headers and this paragraph to the top of the form so this is how you can add a title or add a subtitle or text to your form and again you can grab this and move it anywhere you want so we're going to move it up and down then the third thing is that you can click on a field and click the pencil to edit the field and to say it's required or it's not required the fourth thing is to add regular fields so we can go in here and add standard fields or we can add custom fields that we've created so i'm going to go ahead and just put a checkbox example in here and save it and you can see that it has a text box with text that is not readable so we're going to see if we can work on that afterwards so we've added the fields in this first section of build form where we add fields add text move fields to where we want them and we're ready to move on to the second section at the top called design so let's move to design by clicking next and we're going to see a couple of things that happened here first of all over on the left we now have three buttons so we have templates presets and settings that we're going to work with and then also just so you know if you click anywhere in the form itself so i'm going to click on this text we're going to now see the customize information over on the right so let's start at the left side so you come into the design section and we can click on the presets now presets are a style 
setting. So the background of the form, the color of the text, the type of fields, the formatting, all of that happens in presets. So we can use a default style or we can go to, as you can see, I've used several presets here. I'm just going to use my branded form preset. When you click on it, you see it changes the colors. Let's go back to the preset that we had already and we're going to add a preset and we're going to start from scratch and we're going to call this how to use Groove Mail and add that. Okay, so you can see it started from scratch. So that's the second item here is we can use presets. The third item is settings. And we're gonna come back and work with settings in just a little bit. And I'm gonna show you what advanced things you can do with your form. So let's go back and we're gonna go to the form after we choose our preset and we're gonna go into some of the settings. So the first thing we have is what is the text color inside the form. So because I want to make a darker background, I'm going to make the text color white, which is going to make it go away. You see that that text went away. Now again, this color is staying there because I changed the color using the actual text formatting. And so once you do that, it overrides the information over here on the right. But the rest of the text color, you can see that that one, two, three turned into white. All right, let's change then the background color of the form itself. So I'm gonna use a branded 277 BCE and change the background color of the form. Now we can start to customize the look of the form itself and you can add an image, a pattern. You can also change spacings. Let's do this. Let's go back and delete these. So we're going to go back to build form and I am going to click on this and delete it. I'm going to click on this and delete it. I'm going to click on this and delete it. And I'm going to re-add these. So let's go add field, scroll way to the bottom. Let's add a heading and then let's add field, scroll to the bottom and let's add a subheading. We're just going to add that for this time. And then we're going to move these to the top. All right. So now let's go to design back where we were. Click next. Now, when we click on this and click headings and change the color, you'll see that it changes the color of the headings. I'm going to put that back to white and I'm going to make this a little bit bolder. And again, we can move things around. All right. We are going to keep looking at design options. We can change the colors. We can style the fields by changing the background color. So if we change this background color to no color, you can see what it does. We're going to leave it at white. We can also change the size of the text. Now, when we change this, you can see this is changing for every one of the fields, any fields that we have on the form. And then for button, we are going to go to, again, the color for the background color right here. I'm going to change this to branded. And this is this is the way I'm going to leave it for now. So you can see that we can change the colors, we can change the font, we can change the style. Now if you want to get into advanced mode and make one field different from all the others, you can click advanced mode and you can see that we have our headings, the specific headings. So you can have multiple headings, multiple subheadings on your form. And then we're going to go down to fields. And you can see that we still have access to all of the field, the field settings. We can select a particular field and change it. So what we would do is click checkbox example, add customization. You can see the text color is black. And we're going to, for this example, change it to green. So you can see that just for that field, we can have this is black. First name is black here, email is black, but you can change one field at a time. And that is by using the advanced mode. Now let's say you wanna get rid of that. You don't want that field change. When you drop it down, you can say remove customization and it will put it back to the default for all of the fields that you've used above. So that is how we use the design section when we're in the design area and we can change the look and feel of the form. Now, once we click the check mark, we have edited the preset that we're using. So now this preset has been set and we can use that for any form from now on. So if you really like how this is laid out and how it looks, you can use that preset for any form from now on. Okay, I said we were gonna go back and look at the settings. So let's go take a look at some of the advanced changes we can make on the form itself and the fields and how they're laid out. And this is gonna be talking about rows and columns. So the layout type can be vertical, it can be horizontal. You can see that you can just flip that switch and everything will go across the page instead of up and down. And it can be custom. Now custom is helpful because once we click custom, you'll notice that over here on this bar, there is nothing showing. 
when we click custom, we're going to see rows and columns over here. And that's what I want to show you next. How do you use rows and columns? So first of all, we have to click on it and this will show us what rows and columns exist already. So let's first of all, add a row and you can see it has one column inside of the row. So I'm going to take the submit button and put that down in that row and I'm going to add another row and this row I'm going to take this drag handle you can see this drag handle right here and I'm going to move this row above because I wanted to take this field and put it inside of this area now let's take this interested in the newsletter put it above let's take this stay in the know and put it above and now I'm going to add another row and I'm going to add a column into the row so you can see you can add three four columns if you want to delete them you hover over it and click delete. I'm gonna take the email and first name and make them horizontal by putting them in these columns. So now I'm gonna take this row that has two columns by taking this drag handle and put it up here, right here. So now I will take the email field and put it over here and I would take the first name field and put it here. So this lets us structure with columns and lets us structure with multiple rows on our form. And right now we're seeing the structure, which again, if you hover, you can move the field, you can move the column. If I wanted to take this column, so we have the row right here. We have the column in the upper left of the column. You can see that. And then we have any fields. They have their own drag handle. If I were to take this column and move it up here, you can see that it is putting it inside this other row and we can drop that new column. Let's put it back where it was. And now if we click the hide button for rows and columns, now we just see the form the way it's gonna look. Okay, we have used the design section. Let's click next and go to setup. As I mentioned before, the setup is the way it has always been. So you can go back and look at other form tutorials to find out how to use the setup area with subscribers, uh, tags sequences and so forth we're going to go next as if we've finished that completely and i want to show you integrations so we can do four things in the integrations area and this is new with the new groove mail form builder so first of all let's go to memberships and essentially what you can do is when somebody fills out the form you can add a membership so i'm going to use example membership and free access and click add. So this means that when they fill out the form, they will automatically be given access to this membership and the free access level. So the first section is memberships. The second one is integrations. So if you have integrations set up in your account, you can click add new integration, choose one of the integrations you have set up and fire it with this form. Thirdly, you can do webhooks. Again, webhooks are advanced ways of connecting with other applications outside of Groove. You would click add new webhook, put the URL in there, and you could fire a webhook with your form. And the fourth thing is you can deliver files automatically. So let's say somebody's gonna come and fill out this form and they are filling out the form to get a free download, a free PDF. So we can click add new file, choose the file we want to add, click select, and you can see that it's gonna deliver that email. And they'll get an email that says, here are your files, and it'll have a button for them to download the file automatically so we can add memberships integrations webhooks and files and this is new with the new form builder okay let's click next now we're back at embed or at links where we used to have in groove mail form and i just want to show you one new thing that's part of groove mail form builder now and that is select a preset so if we wanted to we can change the preset that's going to be used and that's going to be used for an embedded form. So if you're going to embed the form in some other website in WordPress or, or Squarespace or any other website builder, you can take this embed code, copy it and put it into that builder. And you can determine what kind of a preset you want to use, how you want it to look, not the fields that are on it, because that's part of the template or part of the building of the form. But you can choose the style, the color, the colors of the fields and all of the things we did in the design area. So I'm going to leave it at how to use Groove Mail forms. And ultimately, this is not going to affect what it does when we pull in the Groove Mail widget into onto our page. We click finish and that's it. We've created the Groove Mail form and now we're going to take it and put it onto the page so you can see again how we interact with the new 
GrooveMail form. So I have an empty page here just so you can see how you add the form. What are some of the controls that we have now? So I'm going to go over here to Elements. I'm going to go to Groove Apps and grab the GrooveMail form app and pull it onto my page. So we're going to click on it to configure it, which brings up configure settings over on the right or you can click the gear just above it. So it comes in with the use presets from GrooveMail and we're going to go first of all choose the form. So the form we just created was called how to use GrooveMail forms but the second setting and this is new in the new form builder is we get to choose the preset. What do we want it to look like? And so I set up this preset how to use GrooveMail forms and I'm going to use that so that when we pull that form in it's going to look exactly the way we created it. So let's click update and close. And there you go. The form has been pulled in to the page. We can change the size of it if we want to. Let's just go change this width, pull that back. And we can we can do a few things. What we can't do is change the color of the background or the color of the fields because we're using the preset from GrooveMail. So let's go look at the other way to bring it in. This is kind of the old way of using forms in Groove pages. So instead of saying use presets, we're going to turn that off and we're going to update and close. Now you can see that it brings it in the way it used to bring it in, which is basically not formatted at all. It's got the fields and you need to go through the, the form, change the background and all of that. One more thing on presets from GrooveMail. When we say don't use presets from GrooveMail, we put our own thank you link redirect in here. So I'm going to change it to one of the pages from the actual site that we're building and updating close. So what we've done is we've pulled in a GrooveMail form without formatting it and we've told it where it should go after somebody fills it out. Now, if we use the presets, so I'm gonna now say use presets, you'll see that this thank you redirect disappears. That's because in the GrooveMail forms, inside of the setup area, we actually have a place in the setup area called success URL and this is where we would put the URL that this form is going to go to. So if you think about it this is because again if you're going to embed this form in some other site you want to be able to embed it and you won't be able to use the controls like we have in page builder. That's because this is integrated into Groove Pages. So what you'll do is you'll put your success page URL into the form itself so that now when we use presets that's going to be automatically a part of inserting this form. So I'm going to update and close. We now bring it in again with all of the styling and the things we did over in GrooveMail and it's going to go to whatever URL we told it to over there. So here's the final thing. Let's say you get the form added to your page and you don't like something about it. You want to change it. You can actually click the gear and it says you can edit the selected form by clicking here. So let's do that. It's going to open a new tab with the form in the design section already. So now we can go change the background or change anything we want. I'm going to change the background color just so we can see it too. Very different color and I'm going to say done editing. Okay now let's go back to Groove Funnels. We're going to update and close and you see it brought it in with the changes that we just made. So you can edit a form right from Groove Pages after you've added it. And that's it. That is how to use the new Groove Pages form builder. And if you have any questions, if you have comments, if something's not clear, I'd love to hear it in the comments below so that I can keep giving you the best content you can have about Groove.cm. Thanks for watching the video. I just want to remind you that we have a free workshop every third Thursday. You can go to yourbestgroove.com slash free dash workshop and sign up. It's a two hour workshop and we go through the steps you need to take step by step to build a lead generation funnel. So make sure you sign up for that. Make sure you've liked and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial here at Groove Tutorials.